World War I veteran Robert Graves reported, quote, The troops that had the worst reputation for acts of violence against prisoners were the Canadians. With the Canadians, the motive was said to be revenge for a Canadian found crucified with bayonets through his hands and feet in a German trench. This atrocity was never substantiated. Nor did we believe the story freely circulated that the Canadians crucified a German officer in revenge shortly afterwards. End quote. Canadians, often stereotyped as friendly and pleasant, did not exhibit these qualities when facing their enemies. During the First World War, Canadian soldiers had an infamous reputation for their brutality. It is unclear whether they did this to prove themselves, in revenge for false rumor, fear of prison retaliations, or for some other reason. While there was already the 1906 Geneva Convention, their inhumane actions, along with many other soldiers, led the convention to include protection for prisoners of war. During World War I, Canada was part of the British Empire, which meant they automatically entered the conflict after Britain in August 1914. Canadian men would stand at the front line until the end of the Great War in November 1918. At the time, the population had yet to reach 8 million. In addition, Canada only had a small army. Nevertheless, when the war was announced in Canada, thousands of eager men and women enthusiastically volunteered in the military. The Canadian Corps number increased to 600,000 individuals with about 430,000 traveling overseas to fight in the First World War. By October 1914, about 40,000 Canadians joined the battlefield in World War I as a Dominion of Britain. After rigorous training in both home and British camps, the Canadian Corps was split into four divisions and immediately aided the Allied forces at the village of Nymphe-Chapelle in March 1915 and the Second Battle of Ypres in April. This battle was notorious for being the first time Germans deployed their lethal chlorine gas. Hearing Canadians had joined the front line, German troops taunted them. Quote, Come out, you Canadians. Come out and fight. End quote. Amid the battle, a morbid rumor spread claiming that a Canadian soldier had been crucified and displayed on a barn door by German soldiers. Many swore to have seen the sight, but all the witnesses had different retellings. Whether this event took place or not, the Canadian battalions used this Christ-like image as fuel to fight or eradicate all German troops. Another rumor that spread was their ruthless reputation. They had a reputation for not bothering to take in prisoners of war because they would have to share their rations. However, when they did capture someone, Canadians were well known for the worst acts of violence. This is a retelling from a Canadian soldier. Quote, I was sent back with three bloody prisoners, you see, and one was limping and groaning, so I had to keep on kicking the sod down the trench. He was an officer. It was getting dark, and I was getting fed up, so I thought, I'll have a bit of a game. I had them covered with the officer's revolver and made them open their pockets. Then I dropped a Mills bomb in each, with the pin out, and ducked behind a traverse. Bang! 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 No more bloody prisoners. No good Fritz, but dead ones. End quote. Although their ration was limited, another cruel act was when Canadian soldiers threw a can of corned beef into a German trench. When the enemies yelled back for more, Canadian combatants would instead toss grenades. One of the most feared strategies operated by Canadians was their large-scale nighttime trench raids that dominated known man's land and enemy trenches. Although Central Power and Allied forces were encouraged to conduct trench raids, Canadians became experts and innovators of the deadly technique. Though several Canadians opposed the dangerous practice, the raiders were often volunteers or men who were volunteered for the task. They would sneak up on unsuspecting, sleeping Germans and engage them in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat using weapons such as grenades, bayonets, guns, and homemade weapons. They would destroy what they could, finish the raid objectives, collect bits of intelligence, amass souvenirs, and retreat. Tim Cook, 
a Canadian historian stated, quote, The Canadians transformed a trench raiding to a deadly art, which wore away at the enemy's morale and strength as he was kept hot and nervous whenever opposite the wild colonials, end quote. To maximize their stealth, Canadian raiders blackened themselves, wore dark clothes, shapeless head coverings, and black gloves. They also created tools such as grenade catapults to increase their killing power. They continued the raids even after other units had abandoned the practice due to high casualties. If raids were compromised by the enemy's patrol team, Canadians would capture a couple of prisoners and run back. If the travel back became difficult, they killed their prisoners to make the journey back easier. Until the end of the war, raid operations were a regular, systematic tactic that increased in planning and execution. When asked to retell a Canadian raid, Philip Gibbs said this, quote, There were screams of German soldiers, terror shaken by the flash of light in their eyes and black faces above them and bayonets already red with blood. It was butcher's work, quick and skillful. 30 Germans were killed before the Canadians went back, end quote. After the Second Battle of Ypres ended in May 1915, the Canadian infantry lost thousands of their men. Regardless, they became known among Allied forces as resilient and dependable soldiers. The frontline Canadian troops stalled the German advance with counterattacks enabling the British troops to push forward. German soldiers also developed an admiration for the Canadian troops. One captured German soldier stated that the Canadian soldiers had fought like hell. Fighting persisted outside Yip, with troops from Canada, Britain, and India marching towards Festubert, France to assist the French infantry in another battle. Due to rainy weather, insufficient firepower, and lack of communication from higher rank officials, the Battle of Fistuber failed with a bloody mess of casualties. With a new obstacle and outdated weapons compared to German troops, Canadian trench soldiers constructed makeshift pipe bombs out of scraps and surrounding resources. Slingshots and catapults were assembled alongside deadly crackpot bombs to clear out enemy trenches. The bomber parties of each side played a dangerous game of hot potato with the bombs, attempting to throw them back before they detonated. The holiday season was fast approaching at the end of 1915. When Christmas arrived, there was a temporary peace as artillery fire ceased for a few hours. On one occasion, during the Christmas truce of 1915, German soldiers wished Canadian troops a Merry Christmas, and the Canadians returned back the gesture. Then, German soldiers waved back, offering to share some cigarettes. However, a Canadian soldier would answer back and end the truce by shelling two German soldiers. Lance Corporal George Dial retold, quote, A sergeant, however, put a stop to it by opening fire and hitting two of their men and when they returned it, one of our lads was shot through the head. That put an end to our Christmas gathering quickly, and night came." End quote. Raids were also performed by Canadians on Christmas morning to attack unsuspecting German soldiers celebrating Christmas during a holiday truce. One unanticipated raid had Canadians rushing out of a hidden tunnel and battling Germans for 45 minutes in hand-to-hand -hand stalemates. Besides the raids, Truces were a frequent happenings during the war. One such truce, which was necessary for both sides, was a temporary ceasefire to allow them to collect their dead. Another was for soldiers to relieve themselves above trenches since proper bathrooms were non-existent. However, truces could be broken at any time if either party were to attack. For instance, one circumstance when a truce ended was when Canadian Private Wheeler witnessed a naked German soldier staring back at him while defecating over a trench. Wheeler returned the look with a shot from his rifle. Early 1916 to June 1916, Canadian soldiers suffered significant losses during the battles. They redeemed themselves as an elite force during the Battle of the Somme. Their formation, bravery, and speed in combat were so impressive that the German soldiers referred to them as Stormtoppen or Stormtroopers. 
At the beginning of the Battle of the Somme in September 1916, there was an occurrence when a Canadian soldier, Corporal Leo Clark, fought against 22 Germans after all his comrades were either wounded or killed. Both sides exchanged blows from their rifles and grenades. Clark exhausted his rifle through the group and dealt in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat when one of the German soldiers stabbed him in the leg with a bayonet. Clark struggled with the soldier, but eventually killed him by impaling him with his own bayonet. After the encounter, Clark walked away alive and captured one man as a prisoner. At the Somme, Canadians did not show mercy towards enemies. A private in the infantry revealed that he had been instructed to shoot first and talk later, and to take no prisoners until our objective had been gained. Depending on the soldiers, some were hesitant to obey the command, but others ultimately carried out the order. The Canadian troops would line up and gather surrendered Germans near a mound of warm, lifeless prisoners. They had no knowledge that they would soon join the pile with a bullet to their head. Those who knew pleaded and presented photographs, but Canadian troops did not show mercy. By the middle of the Battle of the Somme, it had become a general belief for German soldiers that Canadians killed prisoners of war. While the Somme was reaching an end with the Allied forces eventually becoming the victor, other Canadian infantry divisions marched to the Vimy Front in October 1916. In three months before the start of the Battle of Vimy Ridge, about 900 Canadian troops carried out around 60 raids. Out of these, 48 raids were successful. The objective of each raid was to either collect information, hinder Germans from setting barbed wires, win control over no man's land, or torment and inflict casualties. Canadian battalions held a long-standing competition as to who was the most fierce, based on the results of the raids. From an excerpt, quote, Raids were frequent now. We raided the Germans partly to get information as to what they were doing and what they think we were doing, and to terrorize them and lower their morale, end quote. By April 1917, all four Canadian divisions, for the first time, would fight at the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Posted above German trenches was a sign that read, Welcome Canadians. Cut out your damned artillery. We, too, were at the Somme. Through the crescendo of grenades, machine guns, and shell fires, each division of the Canadian Corps accomplished their planned objectives, swept through trenches, and captured prisoners. Although prisoners were taken, veteran Archie McWade said he was told before the Battle of Vimy Ridge, Remember, no prisoners. They will just eat your rations. Canadian troops, now known as the Assault Troops, had aided in the victory of Vimy Ridge. This victory symbolized Canada as a nation with equal power to Great Britain, not just a Commonwealth Dominion. In the First World War, Canadian armies played a crucial role in helping Allied forces achieve victory. There were more than 172,000 Canadian casualties and 66,000 deaths. Their reputation for killing prisoners may have been the fact that they were the soldiers on the front line, therefore in constant contact with enemies. Even though gossip of Canadian mistreatment spread, it is recorded that they captured about 43,000 Germans as prisoners of war. Being in constant contact with their enemies, they had to rely on their willpower and intuition amidst chaos and destruction. But their actions, along with other nations' infantries, led to a reform of the Geneva Convention. After World War I, new updates were added to the 1929 Geneva Convention. This convention established regulations for the daily routine of prisoners, stated all prisoners should be treated with empathy and must live in decent conditions. It also designated the Red Cross as the primary neutral organization responsible for gathering and transmitting information about wounded or deceased individuals and prisoners of war. I'm very grateful for the support you guys have shown and I'm excited for the next topic. If you want to hear other stories, check out these two videos linked. You can find all sources I used in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this story and I would like to thank you for watching.